Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch stores on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Well, there's a little new trope that is making its way through the internet based on this particular mental midget's throwaway line. Mr. Speaker, how many world leaders for how many decades have seen and known what is coming, but have decided that it is more politically expedient to keep it behind closed doors? My generation and the generations after me do not have that luxury. In the year 2050, I will be 56 years old. Yet, right now, the average age of this 52nd Parliament is 49 years old. OK, Boomer. Uh, current political institutions have proven themselves incompetent of thinking outside of a short political term. That was Zoe Swarbrick, a MP from New Zealand. Now, to be clear about a couple of things, in the first place, Swarbrick is talking about climate change alarmism. This is something that will never, ever come to pass. I have one video, in fact, one of my highest viewed ones, actually, on BitChute, where I explain the scientific problems with what is laughably called climate science. It's called Debunked. Climate science is not science, and there's a link to it in both my description box and occasionally scrolling past on my lower third. In the second place, Swarbrick is railing over the fact that the average age in the New Zealand Parliament is 49 years old. Now, to break this down, firstly, cat catastrophic climate change will never, ever happen. Again, for a full breakdown of this, take a look at my video debunked climate science is not science now the fact that swarbrick believes this nonsense is indicative that she was educated during a period in which education had been largely replaced with socialist and communist indoctrination i've got uh, a number of other videos in which i say that this is in fact precisely why generations educated after mine should never be allowed to come to power and swarbrick is a perfect example of this until such time as we are again teaching science and history, no one educated after my generation should be allowed to come to power. And it isn't exactly like we were all that well educated ourselves. Secondly, baby boomers. <laughs> they are between 55 and 72 years of age. This means that Swarbrick isn't really talking about baby boomers, but rather Generation X, whose ages are 54 to 39 years old. And that would be me, 54 years old, I barely qualify. Now, I can forgive not knowing the difference between these generations. Swarbrick is only 25 years old, and to young people, well, pretty much all us old people, we just all look alike. Now, young people um, are using, I mean, young people are, number three, zarking stupid. I know, because I was at Swarbrick's age. A quarter of a century later, I'm aware of just how stupid I was at age 25, and no doubt in another quarter century, I'll be aware of just how stupid I am right now. This is what everybody finds out over time. It's just true of everyone. And the only solution to this problem is life experience, which Swarbrick totally lacks. Now, amazingly, amazingly, some of my favorite YouTubers are defending Swarbrick, and they should know better. The most egregious, in my opinion, is Carl Benjamin, a.k.a. Sargon of a God. In a recent video, he took this throwaway line totally out of context in order to bash baby boomers. I am unclear that he even knew the context. It would be unusual for him since he is not a climate change alarmist himself. The later generations, ignorantly using Swarbrick's line, can be forgiven since they were never educated. They don't know any history or science, they only know memes. And the line is certainly, it's great meme fodder. And in fact, it's such good meme fodder that I've come up with a counter meme. Now, the meaning of this should be self-explanatory. It is a way to flippantly dismiss Swarbrick and all those who would use her as meme fodder. They are, after all, the generation who believe in all manner of scientifically ludicrous doomsday scenarios with climate alarmism being chief among them. 
Now, if you want to download this meme, please feel, feel free. It is on my website. There's a link to it in my description box, as well as scrolling past on my lower third. Zwarbrick's throwaway line, intended again, remember for Gen Xers like myself, not for baby boomers, um, overlooks all of the baby boomers' massive con uh, c contributions to both art and science. They only invented the transistor, the integrated circuit, personal computers, the internet, video games, and the mobile phone, among many other things. They only revolutionized computing, perfected television as a medium, revolutionized heating and air conditioning, and made virtually every good movie, TV show, and musical composition that you can find out there today. And that's only really a start. Listing the baby boomers' accomplishments takes entire textbooks, and it has. Some of the younger boomers, closer to my age, are still working on ways to make your life better. Now, Zwarbrick also flippantly ignores the contributions of my own generation, which include we refined the internet, putting it into your home and everything that comes with it. We turned the integrated circuit into multi-core CPUs the size of your fingernail. We made your mobile phone and one of your main computers the same device. We wrote most of your video games. We revolutionized computing again. We were the last generation to produce non-derivative movies, TV shows, and music. And that's only the start. They've also got textbooks written about us. We're still actively working on ways to make your life better. Now, it's unsurprising that Zwarbrick and her generation don't know of the contributions of those who came before her. They were taught no history nor science. Fortunately, unlike Zwarbrick and later generations, I have always, given my 40 years in IT, been keenly aware of the giants whose shoulders that we stood upon in order to produce what we did. But then again, I was taught at least some history and quite a lot of science. But what has, at this point, Zwarbrick's generation contributed? Nothing, really. Only a movement toward communism and socialism. And lacking in education, they don't understand that communism and socialism always fail, killing millions in the process. It gives Swarbrick's generation another 25 years, and who knows what they'll contribute. They'll, it'll certainly be something significant. But right now, nothing. Nada. Zilch. De rien. So please use my meme as a hashtag. Remind these... <laughs> Unaccomplished ignorami that it is now our shoulders upon which they stand. So build something good with what we and the Bil Boomers gave you. Okay, Doomers? And that's all I have to say about that. I would certainly love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.